Knox County, Ohio, a rural community of 60,000 people in the heart of the United States. Made up mostly of agriculture and industry, Knox County enjoys a comfortable economy. When you begin to look deeper into the relationships of the villagers and townspeople, you begin to see that it's not all courier and Ives. Civic leaders know that poverty exists, and it looks different here in this rural setting than in large urban areas. Think about Knox County. Think about what you see every day. You look around, you see beautiful settings, you see beautiful landscapes, you see old buildings, um, but what you may not realize, you actually see the face of poverty. You know, we have a number of people in our community that are barely making ends meet, but that doesn't mean that any of us couldn't be in a real tight situation really fast. If we look at children under the age of 18, nearly one in four children in Knox County live in poverty. We know that at least 13% of Knox County households are living in poverty, but certainly there are many more that are living at, at very low incomes and struggling to make ends meet. We have a working poor here. We have a lot of people who are trying really hard. Unemployment right now is only at 6.5%. However, um, people are working, but they're not getting paid a lot. So they still need help. They need help uh, with Christmas. They need help with their food making ends meet. Um, even though they might get SNAP benefits, that doesn't always make it all the way through the month. In a rural community, you know, poverty involves things like sleeping on friends' couches, uh, living with Aunt Betty and until Aunt Betty says there's no more room at the, at the house and you need, you need to make a different choice. Uh, poverty's more hidden and people aren't seen on the streets. Basically, we have what we, what we term couch surfers and they move from uh, friend to friend or uh, family member to family member. They can stay a night here, maybe two nights there, and um, they're, they're hidden from sight. So it's easy sometimes to put them out of our minds. So, how does a healthy rural community handle these challenges? Partnerships make the difference. You know, typically we're not a direct service organization. Typically we're the community planner and the convener and, and uh, working with the partner agencies who do a lot of the legwork or most of the legwork in our community. The Salvation Army provides so many different uh, services to the community. Um, one of our biggest programs is the social services program. And we offer emergency services to clients who find themselves in um, a situation that they really wasn't expecting. Well, Interchurch is an emergency needs provider, and we have four offices in the county, Danville, Centerburg, Fredericktown, and Mount Vernon. And we provide um, the same services in all four locations. So no matter where someone is, it's easy to get to an office and ask for assistance. So maybe their um, electricity is being shut off, or they are being evicted from their home, um, something that um, they have ne maybe never even been through. And so they come to the Salvation Army often as their last resort. Uh, they can access our food pantries once every 30 days for food assistance. Um, they can access some financial assistance for things like utility disconnects, um, if they're a little short on the rent uh, because something else has uh, shorted you know, their checks or they've had an unexpected expense, we can help with that. Um, we can help with some prescriptions. Uh, we don't do um, pain prescriptions, but we will help with heart medications, diabetes medications, antibiotics, those types of things. And we can help um, with some gasoline vouchers to enable people to get to out-of-county medical appointments when needed. The work we do through United Way of Knox County involves many different community organizations that serve the education, the health, and the income needs of our community. Uh, locally governed and locally operated, we're able to use local volunteers to determine what community needs are and then figure out the best opportunities to make investments in those needs, creating opportunity for all. We also um, have many programs to help families throughout the week. We have an after school program that serves children um, from East Elementary and several other elementary schools. And every day they come after school, they are tutored and they get their homework done, they have a snack. Um, and they're taken care of often when parents are still working and they would have been home alone. And we also have um, many children's programs, teen programs um, that will keep kids after school in a healthy, safe environment. Um, we have some character building programs, mentoring programs, uh, leadership programs for all ages, and um, just to be able to give them a leg up and out of maybe some of the difficult situations that they're at home. 
things that we do uh, well here that around education, income, and health. So when you think about uh, from early learning campaigns, some may know as the Born Learning Campaign and the Born Learning Trails, uh, to the income side of things, which would be our financial stability program from free tax assistance to promoting the use of 211 and the importance 211 brings to our community, um, as well as accessing um, you know, the free prescription card for families, the family-wise discount card. Those are just a few of the ways that United Way works with volunteers and individuals in our community working to address needs. We hear it occasionally. Why can't they just get a job? The fact is that Knox County's unemployment rate is half a percentage point lower than the national average and a full percentage point lower than Ohio's average. So they do have jobs. But it's not enough to get by sometimes. And it's not the same people asking for help all the time. I think a lot of people believe that the people that inner church assist, um, that they all are living on the dole. And by that I mean they think they are all receiving uh, help through jobs and family services, uh, that they're not doing anything to help themselves. And that's a long way uh, from the truth. Uh, one of the big misconceptions that we have is that people who come and use the services at Salvation Army are using and abusing the system or that they're regulars. We have many, many clients who are working. Uh, they just don't make enough to support their family in today's world. It's most of our clients um, have never been in this situation before. Many of them come and um, they're fumbling when they come to our window. They've never asked for help before. And maybe it's just because they uh, lost their job or there was a death in the family. When working with individuals who are in the midst of, of dealing with all of the different aspects of poverty, you know, we want them to access the services and the resources they need to meet their basic needs and then when they're ready to move on and, and look at asset building. That leads to, you know, when we build assets, that leads to financial independence. Um, some families make it paycheck to paycheck and they budget their money very closely, but then their car breaks down or something happens to where they need to put all their money into something else that they weren't expecting. So that means rent didn't get paid. So um, that misconception that they're using us and using the, the community really is a rare occasion. We're all one tragedy away from needing help, but sustainability in our community goes beyond emergency assistance. Many folks have heard me talk about we can't only be Band-Aids in a community um, because then we're only focused on the emergency needs and never really busy tackling what the root cause issues truly are. The Financial Literacy Program is a program designed to assess people's financial situations, give people an idea of where they are financially with um, the 30-day budget that we do, also linking them with resources that might be available to them. For example, one way we do that is helping with our free tax preparation assistance program that allows people to claim benefits that they may not know that they qualify for, such as the earned income tax credit. Um, with the Food for the Hungry campaign, we found um, one, one year uh, somebody had, had brought a case of vegetables. It was just a case of green beans. And attached to that case of green beans was a note that said, you helped me when I was down and out, and I'm now able and in a position where I can give a little bit back, so please accept this, and God bless you. And uh, those are the kinds of things that, uh, you know, they're small little things, but it's the reason why people go into this type of work. It keeps us going, and uh, it's, it's really a blessing to be able to do what we do every day. I think it's really great. I've never been in a county that works this hard to raise not only money but also awareness of the needs of the county. I think it's really amazing. And so um, we just want to continue to let the community know what the needs are, not to bury our head in the sand because it is, um, because it's a, a smaller county, we are able to meet the needs if we all work together. And there's many counties that it's just too overwhelming. The needs are too overwhelming. But here we could do it. And, um, and we've seen that happen. And so I think as long as people pull together and really educate themselves that there is a need here and that it's not people who are just trying to be greedy and take advantage. As long as they see that, that it really is helping your neighbors get through a tough time, um, 
then I think that's wonderful. And I think we will be able to, to help those that really need it. Every community has its challenges, but knowing these resources to fill these needs is a huge step in creating and sustaining a healthy rural community.